I think second only to how do I control my temper as a parent, the number one question we get is how to teach a child to control their emotions. <laughs> When we understand child development, we know that children, especially young children, mm -hmm. have a really hard time regulating affect or emotion. And that's completely typical. It's developmentally appropriate. Oh yeah, we mm -hmm. expect it. Mm -hmm. They get overwhelmed sometimes with emotion. And you'll see this as you watch them. It's just like, blah, and it just Bursts out, out of them. Mm -hmm. without any level of regulation or modulation at all. And that's exactly what we would expect for a young mm -hmm. child. Now, as they get a little older and as they start to learn things, we want to teach them how to regulate their emotions. The number one way to do that, this is going to surprise everybody, <laughs> right? Model it. Right. You've got to be a good example of modulating your own emotion, regulating the, the way you express your emotions. And that's why probably the number one question we get on the channel is how do I control my temper? Yeah, because we know that when we're modeling a, a, a burst of anger, we're just teaching our child that that's one of the ways or an acceptable way to deal with a lot right. of emotions. And we want to teach them some other ways. And we're going to start right by like labeling the emotion you feel and talk about some ways to handle it. Right from the very beginning, give them the words to communicate how to regulate this emotion. That is a real key, Vicki, because the feelings are hard to label mm -hmm. sometimes. And most kids, actually, you know what? Most adults <laughs> have a very limited emotional vocabulary. Mm -hmm. There's usually happy, mad, sad. Those right. are what, that's what kids start out with. So we're going to take mad and we're going to maybe talk about frustrated, annoyed, mm. irritated. We're going to yes. model those words. I can see you're probably feeling pretty frustrated that your brother took the toy you wanted to play with. There's a lot of ways that you can introduce this to kids. And Vicki, can I just tell on you a little bit? Uh, sure. She's good at this. <laughs> and we were visiting our grandkids recently and I saw you sitting with our granddaughter on your lap and you were reading a book with her. Well, the book has the words printed in it and you can follow those words, but Vicki does something else. She identifies different characters in the book and she asks, do you remember what you asked? I don't right at the moment. <laughs> I wonder what she's feeling right now. Mm. That's brilliant, Vicki. That, it's a technique that I use at school all the time. It's a really great way to use books or TV shows or things like that to talk about somebody's behavior and their feelings, their emotions. And it's a way to get yes. out of your perspective. Kids have a hard time. It's a developmental thing to learn right. how to realize that somebody else feels something very different than what you're feeling right now. This is one of the precursors to empathy mm -hmm. and being yeah. able to really understand your impact on other people. So identifying those emotions and notice, in most children's books, let's say it's an animated book, someone has taken the time to carefully animate these different characters and they intentionally put expressions on those right. characters' faces to communicate that. So let's use the resource that's already there. That's why I wanted to, yeah. to tell on you. I thought it was brilliant. Once we've labeled the emotion, that's going on, let's talk about maybe the expected ways to handle that emotion mm -hmm. or the unexpected ways. And I use the words expected I and like unexpected. That. I almost never use good or bad behavior words. Right. I ever use those words. I just say expected and unexpected. I work with a lot of children who are maybe on the spectrum and it's harder for them to judge what's expected behavior. They might burst all the time. I yes. had a little girl in my office today that she just goes from here in voice level to here with no no transition no transition between. whatever and so we yeah. we talked a lot about today about how it's unexpected to just yell at me when I'm only this close to you because we only need a one foot voice so you know you can talk you know yeah. I know you're feeling frustrated and so when you're feeling frustrated it's pretty common sometimes to turn and walk away or to do this you can talk about what's expected behavior it's not expected to turn around and punch somebody because you're frustrated that sort of thing. You're never wrong about how you feel. 
and your kids aren't either. They're going to have intense emotions. I love the way that you've just framed that, Vicki, because there's, there's expected behavior, there's unexpected behavior, and then we can put it into a framework for our kids that when we're feeling, and then you use your vocabulary words that you've mm -hmm. been working on, when we're feeling frustrated, it's expected that we handle that with our words instead of our fists. Right. Okay, for example, right. mm -hmm. it would be unexpected behavior to use your fists and that might get you into trouble and have other people feeling upset mm -hmm. too. Not only the modeling of it, but the actual teaching of it in those kinds of words. When we're feeling this, it's probably best to whatever mm -hmm. and, and give them the instruction. How are they going to know unless we teach them? You know, Paul, you always say you're never wrong about how you feel. Right. And there's a little part that goes with that because your feelings are very consistent with your thoughts. And I think yes. that's one reason I really like using charts or using pictures or using images, people's mm. facial images, yes. uh, because we can go back as we start to learn how to take others' perspectives, we might have a chance to talk with your child, obviously as they're coming out of that, that feeling, it's really mm -hmm. hard to negotiate or to talk in the heat in of the heat really of the moment. heavy yeah. feeling. But you can talk to them about, okay, you were feeling this. What were you thinking at that time? How, how do you think your friend might have been thinking? Blah, blah, blah. You can kind of talk them through some things and mm. show them that there might be another way to think about things, which will then change some of their feelings. Yes. I love that tie-in. And that comes so naturally to me that I don't always think to mention it. Our thoughts are what drive our feelings. Right. And our feelings affect our thoughts too, obviously. There's, there's some interplay there. It's suggesting those alternatives could be powerful. So what were you thinking at the time? Or if you're reading the book, what do you think he might be thinking mm -hmm. that has him feeling this way? Right. And then the alternatives, well, what else might we think? And that's a really big one is what's another thing that could be happening? What else could we think about that? Right. I found that kids sometimes really need some walking through of seeing how there might be a something else, a what else. And if he were thinking this, how would he feel instead? Right. So. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And that's, there's some powerful ways that you can teach that. Remember, you're in charge of this. Oh, and one other thing. Make sure you model for them. Oh, did I already mention that? <laughs> I'm going to repeat it because what you show them is what's going to teach them much more than anything you ever tell them. And we're big advocates of right. telling them things. And not only modeling it, go ahead and walk through your thought process. It feels kind of funny, but sometimes go ahead and say, mm. oh, I'm starting to feel really frustrated. And then I thought, huh, maybe that person is really in a hurry and they didn't see me and that's why they cut me off. Then I don't feel so frustrated when I think it that way. So uh, go ahead and talk your way through it, not just yeah. for yourself, but also to show them how to do it. There was another strategy. You've mentioned this in other videos, Vicki, and I think we picked it up originally from Brene Brown, mm -hmm. where you put it in terms of, you know, the story in my head is, <laughs> yeah. and you talk about the story, you know, that you're telling yourself that causes those feelings. There's a lot of different contexts and ways to do that. But remember, you as the example, as the model, that's going to be your most powerful teacher. Up next is how to help your child express their feelings. Obviously, that's right in line with what we've already talked about here on this video. And you might have additional questions. In fact, I'm pretty sure you do. You have an opportunity to talk to a member of our team personally, one-on-one, -on -one, for free. We call that the breakthrough call. Mm -hmm. And to get into that breakthrough call, just go to drpauljenkins.com, spelled with a DR, drpauljenkins.com forward slash breakthrough call. It'll take you right to the calendar where you get to schedule a time. We're going to love talking to you personally.